Hi guys, Amber here. Oh, my microphone is here. There we go. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. My guest today is Ivo Sapta, a writer, and probably the sweetest guy you'll ever see with his dog. Because I know oh, the yeah, Daily is... Mail did a video on the dog. Oh yeah, Lucky. Lucky, Lucky the Lucky the Chihuahua, who is no longer with us. But oh, uh yes, I'm so Lucky. Sorry. Yeah, but I didn't see. Look, we're starting off on such a sad. No, no, no. He was 17. He was 17. 17. He was Oh my god. Which is why he was so grumpy. Uh, no, he was uh, no lucky. Lucky was amazing, and he was a stray. Oh, was um, he? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't uh, like my wife and the whole family. We were we're not Chihuahua people, but we saw this little rat running in the street. I went and picked him up, and and uh, my wife knew the moment I picked him up that he would be ours. So um, nursed him back to health, and uh, that's when he started biting me. So <laughs> when he, when he was happy, he would bite. So, oh, and, and, and that's, it, it turns out that's a Chihuahua thing. They're like, they're either happy or they bite and, um, and happy and bite. And he was happy and he bit. And so we made a video about it. That was awesome. I'm surprised like people were commenting. Oh yeah. I know him from Freakazord or I know him from cartoon and stuff. They just thought it was a guy and a dog. I was like, yeah, well, you don't know. <laughs> yeah. But you may also know my guest as the voice of Freakazord in <laughs> yeah it's not yeah. a big it's not a big leap yeah, so, yeah. I, I don't really yeah I've, I've never heard of that show before I mean you know <laughs> I'm just kidding um you may know him as Manny the Uncanny from the Disney Channel he did a lot of segments especially uh one with Frank Welker where they went to the San Diego Zoo was it the San Diego Zoo was it uh, the, Los Angeles Los Zoo. Angeles Zoo that's it yep uh and he did it's a stress call to the monkeys and that's to tried to help him. <laughs> Yes. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, you may know him as the voice of cr Cricket in Pig, Goat, Banana Cricket, um, Ned in Earth to Ned, and my guess is also written for shows like 7D, um, Hysteria, uh, Pac Man and the Ghostly Adventures. That's you, Jamaica, and Tom Brugger have worked on it. Yes, also... I have no idea how that happened, but we did. We wrote one, and then we decided we were too tired. <laughs> And also, I guess I spoke on Buzz Lightyear, Star Command, OK, K, Let's Be Heroes, Animaniacs, and many other things. My guest is the wonderful Paul Rugg. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I am honoured to have you on my show today. You are well, someone I've wanted to talk to for the longest time. Well, so cool. You. Here I am. Hello. And Marge is, my dog Marge is right here. So you Hello, can, Marge. You can't really see her, but she's... Oh, I saw a little a bit of a fur. Yeah. Is she, is she brown or is she black? Mar Marge, come here, Marge. Marge. I was going to say, I think it's, yeah, I saw her uh, little tuft of her hair. Let's have a look at her. Oh! That's Marge. Hi, Marge. Oh, okay, Marge, you can go so now. So adorable. My, I have a, a Shih Tzu called Benji. Um, oh, nice. I think he's a, he's probably asleep at the moment, but of course, he's always sleeping when I'm doing my interview, so I might as well yeah. just show you a picture of him now. Where is All he? Right. Here he is. This was him um, a few weeks ago. Oh, very nice. All right, good. I approve. Yeah, I'm a dog. He's, he's I'm a dog. Guy, so, yeah. He is adorable. Like, I have just tons of photos of him just being silly, and he's just one of the funniest dogs. Oh, man. I'm so grateful to have him in my life for sure. Yep. Dogs are truly a man's best friend. So, Paul, how yes. are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing Wonderful. good. That's great to hear. Wow. Um, I'd really like to kick it off really by asking, well, I know you said you have a daughter. Her name's Julia, I think. Or Julia? Jillian. 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 Jimmy, excuse me. I'm getting confused with uh, Lauren Lester's daughter, Julia. <laughs> excuse me. Because I just spoke to him the other day. So it's just, you know, and also because my mom, <laughs> my mom has, the, has someone who's called Julie. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone's called everyone's called you a uh, 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 J U name in my life. Uh, I'm getting my tongue to the cinema. I have to cut that out. Uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> so yeah, of course your daughter, uh, Gillian. Um, mm -hmm. was she married recently? Because I saw in your face. yes, she was just oh, married. Wow. Uh, oh, a month, a month ago, a month ago. Yeah, wow. yeah. So that's that. That was the big. That was big. And and now she's married, and now we just have Marge, my wife, and I just have that that dog. And um, ah. yeah, so yeah, no, um, life, man, life moves on. It's crazy. 
my brother just got married and I feel really old. I'm only 18. <laughs> my brother's like 10 years old and he got married like last week. And I'm like, oh, please stop growing yeah. up. And he's, yeah. he's, on a honey, he's on a honeymoon in the tropical islands right now. Come on, well, he's living the well, life. That sounds better than what we're doing. I mean, I think the tro- tropical island sounds d- delightful. I Although, mean, yeah. I yeah. mean, you're in America right now. I would have been in America right now. <laughs> really? I don't yeah. know that you do. <laughs> I almost wanted to it's... come to California. I well, you it. should. You should. Yeah. Before it's gone, before we sink into the ocean, you uh, should come and visit. Well, where's, where's everyone going to move to? Are they going to sink with it? Or I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Your laugh. Honestly, it's just so infectious. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, um, I'm filling out my passport. Um form as we speak well not really as we speak but you know <laughs> so i'm hopefully getting a trip booked in for next spring so i can finally come over and visit pretty much everyone who i've interviewed because they want me over there you know instead yeah. of it here we mean we've just had a heat wave recently so it's absolutely sweltering over here and i'm wearing this because it's cold it, the weather keeps changing and you know yeah um back to jillian yeah i was gonna yeah. quickly ask um jillian's like i think she's in in her 20s i think so i was wondering yes. if did she grow up watching the cartoons that you did like freakazoid or anything along those lines or um, or anything like yeah that. well let me see she was born uh about two years after freakazoid uh so freakazoid i think we ran until night um 97 uh, yeah 97 so no but i did introduce her to it so i would show her I showed her uh, her favorite thing is the Huntsman, ah. and when she, when she was like three or four, we would sing the Huntsman song. You hunt, oh. hunt, hunt. He's the Huntsman, uh, which was her her favorite thing on uh, on Freakazoid. Oh. Uh, but yeah, I showed her. You know, um, it's funny. She didn't. We didn't really allow um, television. Uh, when she was a kid so she became she was a voracious reader she you know um lord of the rings i think she, all kinds of so she was very into reading but then at a certain time uh we're like okay uh we're gonna show you some things and then and then she really liked freakazoid um the old dick van dyke show for some reason she was like she thought um because my wife and i remind her of the two lead characters in the Dick Van Dyke show, uh, Rob and Laura Petrie. So that was kind of fun. Um, oh, wow. But yeah, so, yeah. That's so cool. Well, really wholesome as well. Um, on the subject of Freakazoid, obviously, yeah. um, I think a lot of people know the story that you read in for Freakazoid and because they couldn't find a lead character and so they were like, we'll just cast you. And it was probably the best casting decision that they ever made. <laughs> 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 yeah, so tell us the story behind Freakazoid. All right. Well, let me see. I was working on Animaniacs and we were all, uh, so we wrote all of those, all those early 90s or mid 90s or 90s shows from Warner Brothers. Uh, we actually wrote at the Imperial Bank building in um, in uh, Encino, California or Sher- Sherman Oaks. And people would, and the Galleria was the home of the idea of the Valley Girl. Um, and that was the that was the mall where you would find all the where that sort of iconic sort of characters came, came from. So we were we were working there. That's where we were writing all the shows. And I had written, I think we were on our third season of Animaniacs and I was getting a little burnt out on it. And Tom Ruger said, we've just had this project dumped in our laps. And I go, what is it? He goes, it's called Freakazoid. Paul Dean and Bruce Tim developed it. It's really good. Uh, but Steven wants to be more comedic, more like Animaniacs. And uh, they don't really want to do that because that's not really what they want to do. So we're going to do it. So that um, so John McCann and, and I, uh, who also worked on Animaniacs, we sort of worked with Tom Ruger. It was me, John McCann, and um, Tom Ruger. And we sort of redeveloped it, but in like a week because we had to be in production um, so we started writing and really had a great time. And like, man, we weren't getting notes from anybody. Like Steven Spielberg was like, I don't really just have fun. Blah, blah. So we just, we just started writing. And, um, then it came time to, to do the voice, you know, to cast the, the voice. And so we had everyone like all these really great voice actors come in 
Um, but we could never really explain what the character was. We would say, you know, he's nuts. And then we would get something very frenetic, like sort of Jim Carrey in the mask and stuff. We go, no, that's not, that's not it either. And, and we, we had no idea what to say. So Tom Ruger said, Paul, just get in there and see if you can give people an example of what it is. So I'm like, I don't want to go in that room. That's, I'm, that's not my, I don't want to do that ever. Uh, he goes, well, get in there. And um, so I sort of did my own thing. Um, I went off script a lot and they recorded it. And uh, it was me. It came down to me and another actor. Um, and uh, they played it for Steven. And Steven said, just have Paul do it. Just let's get... <sighs> let's get this going because we're the, you know, so um, yeah, it was great. And then I was kind of like, I was a little nervous about it, but, but what ultimately worked was very freeing about it was I got to write and, and use shorthand sort of like, well, this is how I'm going to do it. So I would just write and um, yeah. So it was, it was really uh it was a great experience um tom ruger you know he's he can be like no it's not what i want i want you to do it like this i want you to do it like that um but once we sort of figured it all out and andre romano as our as our director she, you know she couldn't have been sweeter and even though i was nervous in the room you know everything was golden in her mind and you know she has a certain way of making you feel comfortable um and so yeah it was it was great um and it turned turned out to be a lot of fun. That's wonderful. And she has a good taste in headphones too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For those of you who don't know at home, Andrea got some cat headphones recently. Um, I don't know if I have her permission to like put the picture publicly, so I'm not going to put it publicly for now. But um, I showed Paul before, and we approve. It's a pair of black yes. neon headphones. It's very good. It's beautiful. I I knew because because you can see in the background like all her SpongeBob stuff and all her Batman the animated series stuff, and I'm like. I, I I can't. Believe, this is me. This is me who's done this. Yeah. Um. Yeah. As you said, Paul Dini and Bruce Tim they previously worked on Batman the animated series, and I yeah, always yeah, yeah. thought Freakazoid was like what you would get if you mashed got Batman the animated series, Animaniacs, and put it in a mixing bowl. You get Freakazoid. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Well, and, and and yeah, because it was sort of like they gave us the DNA of what this character was, and then Tom Ruger sort of you know. M mushed mushed it up and uh, because steven really steven spielberg really wanted it to be outlandishly comical yeah. um and we didn't know what that what that meant and and that's what was so great about writing the show is we really had no idea what we were doing so it was fun I mean, you took it off the rails and it just took yeah. off from there and <laughs> yeah. it's just become a complete success and what amazing voice actors you had involved in the show. You had Ed Asner, you had yeah. the wonderful David Warner, who we recently who lost. Just passed, he yes. just passed away, yeah. Uh, he was meant to actually do the Galaxy Con Batman the Animated Series. Uh, Galaxy Con, I'm not sure if you've heard of Galaxy Con, they do like mm -mm. online Q&As and stuff like that. Oh, okay. He was listed for that, and I completely forgot until I went back when it was the live stream, they'd removed his name from it, and mm. it would have been really lovely to meet him. Um, what was it like working with him, may I ask? He was wonderful he was wonderful he was as we were doing freakazoid he was doing titanic with james cameron wow. so um he would and i was always surprised i'm like david warner is like an a-list like he's a big guy he's in Tron and, for crying out loud yeah 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 and and he would he would shoot um he would be doing titanic and and for some reason he would come down and do Freakazoid for three hours and then go back to ti Titanic. I'm like, wow. I mean, so I think he had a good time because what we allowed him to do as well was, I don't think he had done much comedy. I mean, Time, time Bandits, yes. Um, but we really allowed him to push it and be silly. And, um, and he couldn't have been sweeter. Always delightful, really professional, and and made us laugh a lot. And um, I remember in Freakazoid, uh, the sessions we had for Freakazoid, we would have a pizza in the green room before we did the session. So it'd be I and remember one time we had Tim Curry, David Warner, um, Jonathan Harris, Ed Asner, uh, Leonard Malton, Maurice Lamarche, uh, yeah. all these, all these, and and we're all sitting around eating pizza. Oh and, my god! <laughs> and I remember going, "This is 
this is great. Like we're all just eating pizza and then we're going to go in and, and make a show. And unlike now, uh, uh, a lot of shows are not done with the whole cast. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, it's just because of, you know, COVID or for whatever reasons in people's schedule. Um, but M Freakazoid and Animaniacs even uh, was all done cast recording. I think um, all the Warner Brothers shows were done. I mean, Batman was yeah. done as well. All pretty much yeah. all shows from Warner yeah. Brothers by Andrea Romana because she loved yeah. group records. <laughs> and it couldn't have been, it couldn't have been more fun because you can then work off of the actor who's beside you. And it brings this, this really cool, magical, magical quality to it. So, um, oh, that was so much fun. But, um, and yeah, Ed Asner and David, David Warner. Oh, well, and I'll finish my D David Warner thing. We, we wrote one specific episode, which was called um, Dexter's Date, which was sort of a parody of Hello, Dolly. And I thought it would be really funny to have David Warner sort of take be like uh, the the Dolly character in Hello Dolly and sing this big song about uh, going out to eat, and it was called Bonjour Lobby. And he was horrified because it was the song went on for like four minutes, and he had to sing, and um, he didn't want to do it. He's like, "Oh, please don't make me do this. I don't want to do this." Uh, and I said, David, you you the, you cannot go wrong with this. It's just be yourself and have a great great time. Um, and the session was so fun because he was so nervous. And um, yeah, it was great. He was ah, uh, I I ah, uh, he's a boy. He was a, a wonderful wonderful guy. That's wonderful to hear. Definitely, he is very much sorely missed. Definitely, yeah. what a talent we've lost indeed. Mm -hmm. Um, moving. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to because you know when you talk about something sad, you don't know how to transition from that. Yeah. Because I I did a project uh, recently and was talking about someone who had deceased and it was like I only put five seconds of silence before quickly moving on to the next. Episode. It was like such and such, such, such and such and such. <laughs> it's like how are you supposed to move on like that? Do you wait ten seconds? Do you say so, okay? So we're gonna move on. Are we? Are we go? Yes, he saw the miss. Okay, so we're going to speak about anime. <laughs> uh, on a lighter topic. On a lighter topic. I don't want to say on a lighter topic because that sounds really insensitive. Like, well, you know. yeah, but but I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You do what you got to do. Yeah. He was a good guy. He was indeed. I respect his work. And now we move on celebrating his accomplishments. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. As the lobe in Freakazoid. <laughs> right. Uh, speaking of Warner Brothers cartoons, you worked on Animaniacs as well. I believe you were a mm -hmm. story editor. Oh, what was it like working for that show? Uh, oh, it gosh. was a lot of fun. Um, that was my first real job. Uh, I had been working, I had been doing improv with um, John McCann, Adam Carolla, uh, Sherry Stoner, and um, we were writing sketches. And when they were coming up with Animaniacs, they came and saw a few of the shows and they gave John and I jobs and and said hey you want to write on this new new show and it had just that we really didn't know that much about the characters of yakka wacko dot um and um i think my first script was called something called rollover beethoven and john's was dracula dracula from animaniacs um and then based on those scripts they're like hey you want a, a job and then i sort of became i specifically worked on yakka wacko dot car cartoons and um and it was really fun to find their characters to sort of like um, to experiment around uh, with what they were like. And um, and Tom Ruger was really fun because he kept pushing us. Uh, and uh, but once I figured out that Yakko Wako Dot were the Marx Brothers, uh, which they are. I don't know if you know the Marx Brothers, their comedy team from way back when. Um, it became really easy. So if anyone wants to know, yes, Yakko Wakko Dot are the Marx Brothers. So wow. there you go. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Marx's sister as well. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, right. of course, of course. Yeah. yeah um, do you know what sort of animals they are? Because I've always believed they were no. rabbits. No, we don't. We, uh, um, in fact, we made that a running gag because Mr. Director, who's a character I used to do in Animaniacs, sort of the oh, Jerry yeah. Lewis character, uh, he thought they were puppy children and um, uh, 
yeah. And I th- I think Randy Rogel even wrote a song, What Are We? Um, and ultimately, I think at the end of the song, it's what we are, dear doctor, is cute. So there you go. Uh, yeah. oh, so nobody the, knows what they are. Oh, so they have a... Um, like, uh, uh, excuse me ambiguous species ambiguous yes. being open to more than yes. one interpretation not having one obvious meaning so yes well, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh so uh you weren't involved on a batman the animated series at all were you no no no, no. Yeah. they were doing it they were doing it as we were doing animaniacs ah so it was like they were the se- serious ones and we, we were the silly ones yeah i love them both and i yeah, could yeah, be serious yeah. and i could be silly I, re- yeah. I, I really want to try and get paul beanie for my podcast i have uh i think i did it uh, email his manager at one point he's uh, she's just like oh yeah he's unavailable and i was like okay i'll circle back in the next few months so yeah yeah hopefully. paul's great paul's great yeah yeah he's uh married to um misty lee who is mm-hmm. another voice actress um mm-hmm. i've because like, i know mark evan you know mark evan is probably, yes yeah, everyone sure. knows who he is uh, he <laughs> told me a really good story about misty how uh, she did like one of his garfield show episodes or something um along those lines but yeah i've heard from mark that uh her and paul dini are really great mm-hmm. oh yeah and yeah. you're another great paul as well <laughs> well there you all there the you best go. people are called paul i'm saying <laughs> Oh man, I'm just I'm I'm I'm, I'm in awe right now that I'm really just talking to you. Oh, <laughs> like okay, I've got to say a little childhood memory. Um, yeah, I just want to keep doing that with my hand. Um, so my mom used to always sing going around the house, or sometimes she still stores it. She sometimes just goes freakazoid, freakazoid, and I was like, <laughs> oh, that. and she was like, I had the okay because I was talking to you tonight. I asked her before. Um, do you know where that freakazoid thing's from? And she's like, no, I just, I, th- I, I thought I was just made it up. And she just, yeah, I was like, well, listen to this. I played her the theme song. I was, she was like, oh my God. That, <laughs> she's been singing that freakazoid theme wow. for years. And That's she never very... knew. Well, she must have known it was a show because she remembers it being on CITV over here in the 90s. And like, my mm-hmm. sister and brother might have watched it at some point. But Wow, so I was like, well, uh, I'm talking to the voice of Freakazoid, so this is going to be a good story to tell. <laughs> so, yeah, so I used to think, like, Freakazoid was, like, a slang for freak or something, and then, of course, as I got older, I discovered Freakazoid was an actual cartoon, so mm-hmm. there you have it. Yeah. Thank you for being Tom... an influence in my mum's life. Oh, you, you are? Yeah, Tom, Tom Ruger wrote that theme song with Richard Stone, um, ah. and I think that's one of my favourite theme songs it's awesome mine as well it gets stuck on my constantly yeah yeah Yeah. thank you for being an influence on my entire family's life (laughs) oh yes well (laughs) our pleasure you know why am i saying you're welcome (laughs) excuse me um so i'd like to move on to well of course my knee the uncanny Mm -hmm. um little series of segments that you did for the disney channel um Mm -hmm. one notable segment that you did was with the legendary frank walker who i've had the pleasure of meeting virtually about a few times once in person before the pandemic and i'm meeting him in about 50 days in edinburgh so oh nice 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 (laughs) i can't wait i can't wait so excited to meet him i've been waiting two years what was it like doing that segment with him because I know obviously uh, you've worked on Freak Zoe with him before. And you know, how did it come about, really? Uh, Bye, Marge. Well, I worked with him on An- Animaniacs and mm-hmm. I worked with him on Freak Zoid. Yeah, he was the, the, the dog, didn't he? The, was it was a dog or a cat that the freak the on Animaniacs? No, on a Freak Zoid. On Freak Freak Zoid, Frank was Frank did a bunch of stuff, he did a lot of utility characters. Um, uh, my favorite thing Frank ever did for hey, us it was the was... cat, Mr. Chubbikins. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Uh, um, that's Frank it. did Dog this cat. bear. He did this. He did this bear in uh, one of the episodes of Freakazoid. And I think it was our pilot episode. Uh, no, it was with Jack Valenny. Anyway, we cut to this stock footage of a bear and, and uh, f- we said, Frank, would you just be the bear? And it, it it to this day makes me laugh more than anything I can possibly tell you. It was so funny. But so anyway, Frank and I knew each other and and you know, we saw each other a lot from Animaniacs and Freak Freakazoid. And then when I started doing Manny, I was like, hey, Frank, would you do this thing? Because you know, Manny always has a goal and he tries to figure something out. I go, can we just go to the LA Zoo and you can show how you come up with voices? And and Frank's like, Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, why not? So that's how Frank is. Frank is the nicest, sweetest, happiest guy. 
And uh, yeah, sure. So we show up and he had never seen me with the hair and the, the thing. And he goes, well, what are we? <laughs> yeah, what are we doing? I go, we're just, Frank, just go with this, please. I'm just going to be weird. He goes, all right, great. And um, it was so fun to just go around and have Frank do that crazy stuff like Abu from Aladdin and monkeys and bears. And, and, um, and, you know, normally when you're doing something like that, you're like, Oh man, Frank's going to get tired of this real quick. We better rush this along. Cause he's Frank Welker. And I, you know, we don't want to overstare. Welcome. And uh, he was like, well, let's just keep going. Let's just go over there. Let's go over there. And um, he was great. He was great. Frank remains um so nice. And uh, he is, uh, I think, of all the voice actors I've known, and I've known a lot of nice ones. Frank is like, yeah, hi. Hi. He's great. He's awesome. He's Frank. Yeah, he's I'm great. so wholesome. It's true. Hey, how's it going? I'm Annie Dan Kenny. And today we're back at the LA Zoo with our pizza-eating curator friend, Michael D. And half-time <laughs> artist, Frank Wilker, who's going to teach us how to do the... It made me laugh. Because because when I first saw this, like, years ago, I was like, it would have been so awkward if they didn't actually know each other in real life. But now, of course, <laughs> you do. I'm like, yeah. okay, that's, that, that's, that's made it even funnier because... Yeah, and, and, and Frank didn't know, like I said, because this is the first time we'd ever done, Frank didn't know how broad and how weird Manny, Manny was. Uh, and he had known me just as a writer and another guy who's in the... And when I started doing this stuff and wearing this loud, loud suit... Frank was like, okay, 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 oh, wow, this is going to be weird. So, yeah, yeah, but he was great. Look, if you think that's weird, I'm at Frank Welker in Liverpool dressed, cosplaying as a freaking goose. Well, and I'm sure he was like, good, good, awesome. Well, that's I mean, nice. I, took, I, took the, I took the little head that I was wearing off, um, but um, uh, I, have a, I have a picture somewhere here on my phone. Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, Oh. I, was, I was the goose from Untitled Goose Game. So that was, it was so good. <laughs> I have a full body photo of me somewhere. I have, okay, you have to, here I am. Okay, here, uh, you have to, I'm just trying to figure out how to, oh, well, uh, I'll play this last. Uh, All right, great. Why is it not playing? Why is it not playing? It's not playing. It's just like for the movies. Okay, let's go see some minkies. Whenever I have a special project and I come to LA Zoo, and do a little research. Here we are at the Kibitchen Minkies, the monkeys that Frank Wilker has used in uh, what? Raiders of the Lost Ark? You and, did the monkey? In uh, Aladdin, I did a boo. To make some of the noises well, for us. Well, they have a lot of kind of like bird kind of quality sounds, yeah. little cheeks and things. Yeah. I want to say we're running for zoo now. <laughs> See, now when I said help, they can't. You're going insane with your voice elation. We would like to okay, try. In the corner. We were shocked, by the way, that he actually did call the monkeys over. No, that's we unbelievable. Like, Frank, you actually did, did call monkeys over. I just hope when he comes to Edinburgh, uh, he takes to the Edinburgh Zoo and he does the same thing that all the Scots monkeys just <laughs> climb it over. Frank, what's that sound that the kitty makes when it's uh, coughing up a furball? As yeah, endorsed by Elvis. Frank, can you talk to it? Okay, do a chicken. <laughs> chicken? <laughs> Here you go. What's the key to the <laughs> elephant noise? Huh? <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> sorry. One more time, show us. <laughs> okay, yes, sorry. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> huh? Pretty good, I think. Maybe we should oh, go so to the tiger. Some... So how do you do the tigers? Can you do grass? Not really. You can't do the growing of the grass. I can do it. Of course, that's sped up. <laughs> so like like, and yet we're faking y'all. Turkey gamble? <laughs> like, okay, Michael, with the close-ups, I can definitely see it's you. An hour now. Yeah. I think we're <laughs> One time I did come here, and Michael, he drove around like this to get me all sick so that he could take my money. If we were to be how many hours of this did you film? How, how so, much footage did you get? Ma Manny, uh, I think we were there two two hours. And uh, the ah, way no. the way Manny works is you overshoot, 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 and then you just get those little bits. Uh, oh, I love um, this bit. 
Oh, I didn't realize there was no glass in those uh, glasses. Yeah, nothing. And I love how that's just reverse. Yeah. <laughs> Frank jump scare. Where's that? So one? here's here's the thing about Frank though. Yeah. All those voices that we all those voices that we um uh that I said, hey, do a chicken, do this, do that. We didn't plan any of that. Oh Frank really? Frank can literally you give him an animal any animal and frank can just do it and that is it it blows my mind have you heard his 12 ducks singing uh 12 days of christmas so yes we wish you merry christmas yes. yeah i think he has 12 ducks on his uh car license plate that's what i've been told by many people <laughs> yeah, yeah no frank Fr yeah frank is a genius he's a genius i found the goose costume the full thing <laughs> very nice <laughs> It's wow. from a game called Untitled Geese Game. Uh, my brother it's went as the man with the pipe, and my uh, um, my sister in law went as the um, the farmer from it. So yeah, that's me as a goose. That's how I met. That's from. that's awesome. Wow. Now this time I'm cosplaying as Ravage from Transformers. What are Frank's characters? Yay! <laughs> and I'm meeting Peter Cullen as well. Have you ever worked with Peter Cullen? My ass. Mm -mm. No, I haven't. Have you not? No. Oh, I see. Yeah, he hasn't done as much cartoons as Frank. If I if I'm yeah if I'm correct, yeah. He's, right. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have to because he's very Optimus Prime. Yeah, yeah he's mm -hmm. he's got that thing done. Oh yeah, indeed. Yeah. Um. So, Paul. Um, yes. You've obviously done a lot of other things. I mean, you've done Earth to Med, which was very yeah. recently, actually. Yeah, it was. Uh, right, right before COVID. I think we wrapped filming on that right before COVID. Were you Ned's puppeteer or were you just his voice? I was, I did. So the way Earth to Ned worked, um, he was, it was crazy. It was a seven foot tall puppet. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the most complicated animatronic head that Henson had ever built. And so the, I think there were 30 servos or motors inside the head. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was responsible only for the mouth. And the way, the way that works is you put your hand in this device and it's got, it's got this, this glove and there's a gimbal. And when you go like that, it opens and closes the mouth. But then when you take like your index finger and press it down within the glove, it can add like it can it can curl the lips up so there are all these sort of little movements within the glove like to put these two fingers down and to go like this that changes the shape of the of the mouth so um i trained for like almost two months to make sure that i could um you know do what our mouths do like you know going ooh e um but that was enough for me, yeah, it's it's like when you think about it, when you go out, yeah, uh, like so uh, I learned, yeah, uh, and it, it took it took a very long long time, but then I think that was all I was capable of. Uh, I was like, I can't learn to do eyes because that's a whole other thing. So I did the mouth. Next to me was Alan Troutman, who was in Babe, and he's done a ton. Of, he's like one of the world's best puppeteers. He was responsible for the eyes. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, eye, eyebrows and some other expressions. And then inside the puppet was uh, Morgana and, and they were responsible for moving the body this way. And then there were people in the front with, um, with the hands. Anyway, there were seven of us, but you put it all together live and it looked like a real character, but it was fun. It was fun. Oh, so was cool. cool. Wow. That, was really cool. that must yeah. be so fun to work on. So I'm yeah. presuming that actually brings me to my next question. What shows did you grow up watching? And maybe cartoons. I was going to ask maybe the Muppets, maybe considering you that was a Jim Henson production, maybe. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I love I love Muppets. For me, the the my favorite cartoon characters were always the Warner Brothers. It was it was Daffy. Number one, number one, Daffy uh bugs bunny tweety um the looney tunes for me were like they were perfect i loved every everything ab about them um i wasn't really a disney fan you know like mickey for me was always like okay what uh what else does mickey do uh he doesn't really like he's not snarky he's not angry he's just always happy which is great i'm not knocking happy but uh daffy is just so deviously 
uh, flawed. And, uh, and, and that's something I always, always liked about, about him. So that, and then, um, Johnny quest. I don't know if you know what Johnny quest is. Of course I do. No, okay. Of course I, do. I was like, I wanted to be Johnny. I wanted to have all of Johnny's gadgets and stuff. So, um, so yeah, it was Looney Tunes on the one hand and then like Hanna-Barbera Johnny quest on the uh, other, but that's what I grew up watching. Wow, that's so cool. Well, very similar to me then, because I grew up watching um, Han- the old Hannah Barbera cartoons because when mm-hmm. Boomerang in the UK used to run all of them before it went to shit. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, because they screen all modern cartoons now. I know Boomerang was made specifically to screen Hannah Barbera cartoons and they seem to have gone against that wish now. Um, mm. So that's uh, what, what my start in, because if, if you didn't know already, I am a voice actress myself. I've mm-hmm. voiced a corn operated ride. It is right there. If I can kind of move my chair. There it is right there. It's a helicopter ride. Uh, and I voiced uh, for a theme park ride as well. Uh, I'm, I've done a voiceover demo. I've sent it off to a few people, so I'm just waiting to see. Am I worthy? Am I? Have I got potential? I don't know. But <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was predominantly um, cartoons like Freakazoid and the old Hanna Barbera cartoons and the Warner Brother cartoons and the Disney Afternoon programs that really and all the voice actors behind them and the voice mm-hmm. directors that really inspired me to follow my dreams. Because oh, like, good, good, yeah. Time, for the longest time, I didn't know what I wanted to be uh, job wise, and now. I've got my heart set on being a voice actress because I studied performing arts at college. So with the mouth articulation things, when we're doing tongue twisters, we're told to um put our, you know, put our teeth in our mouth and, you know, proper thing our words. Like if we're saying like red lorry, yellow lorry, red lorry, yellow lorry, red lorry, yellow lorry. So we like I can't that. even do that. I can't, I can't either. She saw seashells on the seashore. <laughs> Yeah, and then you got Peter Piper, 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 Peter John Mushita. Wow, I don't know if you know how that's done. right? No. No, everyone. No. I, I always talk fast, and then I was. I usually say to people, I feel like John Mushita, but I didn't. I don't know. Do they know who John Mushita is? But then they go, Oh my God, you sound like John Mushita. I'm like, you know who he is? He, he was uh, a Guinness World Record in, uh, holder in the 80s and 90s for the world's fastest car. Yes. Her. Okay. Right, right. So it's him. He... It's him. It's him. Okay, the Micro okay. Machines, man. Yes. The FedEx guy. Yeah, the FedEx guy. Yeah. Yeah. Now I know. Yes. Yeah. Right. I had him yeah. on my show. He's so lovely. Yeah. So sometimes I do feel like him because I tend to talk too fast. I have had people complain about me talking too fast. So I'm trying <laughs> to slow things down. Don't worry. Uh, well, this is a family of very f- fast t- talkers. So <sighs> don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. And then I suppose because I had I had one complaint about one of my videos saying I talked too fast and I, you know, the pronunciation just ruined the video for me. Then I had another person come to me and say, your fast talking makes you have potential to be a voice actor like you could voice a fast talking character i'm like okay so this can go good uh, or bad both ways so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. no yeah it's true yeah yeah indeed the 7d you worked on the 7d didn't you with tom ruger and i did i kelly did i did ward. I, and kelly ward kelly um, ward yeah. yeah and kelly 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 and uh, andrea so probably the two preeminent voice directors. Kelly is is uh, again. So here's here's the um here's the here's the here's the theme running through all these people. They're nice, yeah. they're pleasant, they're good. They're not jerks. They're just happy, and they want you, the voice actor, to do the best you can do, and then we can all go home. Um, and uh, and Kelly is very similar to Andre in that way, just supportive. And he wants you to try. And if it didn't work, hey, what the heck? We tried. Um, so Kelly's aw- awesome. Kelly also came and he um, he guest directed some of the high school uh, musicals that my wife and I and the Bernsteins did. Yeah. Wow. So like yeah. Andrea as well. Wow. That's so yeah. cool. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, it's up there. Kelly's up there with Andrea and uh, Susan Blue as well. Yeah. Uh, among a few other people. But I think... I am very based. They are probably my top three voice directors. Yeah. Um, and Pe- I, I don't know if you know, so. but but Ke- Kelly used to, um, I mean, maybe he still does. He would direct the big musicals at USC um, and up until recently. And it would spend like months. It was great. Yeah, he's a great director. He's fabulous. I think um, 
the day I found out he vo- he was the voice director for Jake in the Leatherland Pirates, I nearly screamed because when I was about 15, I had a massive hyperfixation with that show. And like through the pandemic, because I got to speak to Corey Burton, who was obviously Captain Hook. And then just to find out Kelly Wall was the voice, because I mean, I did see his name, but I didn't think, you know, much of it because like thinking, oh, you know, you see that and you just, you know, but now I'm proper obsessed with these voice directors. And then they announced him for Comic-Con Liverpool. And I didn't really no up until because they advertised him as one of the cast members from Greece and I didn't click that it was the same Kelly Ward the voice director Mm -hmm. until I looked him up and I was like oh my god and it was his first ever convention because he emailed me saying it was his first ever convention that he was doing a special request obviously as a Greece reunion I was like okay I've got to meet this man now he's voice directed my fave one of my favorite really shows Jake mm. and Neville and Pirates like he's voice directed Jeff Bennett he's voice directed Corey Burton mm-hmm. I was like okay I've got to meet this guy meeting him I nearly cried and I just nearly threw myself into his hands I was like <laughs> thank you for pleasing 15 year old me when I had no one else to turn to when yeah. everyone else hated. yeah he's he's awesome Kelly's Kelly's the best. Yeah, like I mean, I mean to be fair, let's say for example, Corey Burton as Captain Hook. It's he's 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 a really good Captain Hook, but the way he delivers his lines and the way he says some of the lines I'm in love with, that's all thanks to Kelly. Mm -hmm. Like he told him to say it that way. I'm like, okay, (laughs) it's partly because of the voice directors that the characters are who they are today. Mm -hmm. Um, Back to the Seven D. Yeah, really good voice cast. I think Bill Farmer was on it, Kevin Michael Richardson, Jess Harnell, mm-hmm. and a lot of people. Wow! So, what was it like working on that show then? It was it was good. Uh, that that was one. Oh, yeah, where... no, Kelly uh, Kelly Osborne was on it. She's she's pregnant yeah. now. Yeah, she's having the first child. Yeah. 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 We yeah. didn't. Yeah. So that show, I, I don't. I was never with the rest of the of the, of the cast. I would come in. Uh, I would work with. Um, um, uh Lee Allen Baker who oh, did yeah, Queen yeah, yeah. Delightful who was so funny she's so funny she's so good um and I would work with her quite quite a bit but I never worked with anybody else so I was never there when when anybody was there um I would come in and do it by myself or do it with uh with uh Lee, Lee Allen but uh but it was it was it was fun. I was, yeah, it was great. And I, I got to do my sort of Jerry Lewis ish kind of, you know, you know, well, madam, you, you know, so that was, uh, that was kind of easy. Oh, but so it was cool. fun. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've seen tons of videos on Facebook, the ones that Tom's posted. I think they're just, you, you, you just, you just wish to yourself, man, I wish I was there. Well, I know um, pretty much every single voice session, well, uh, pretty much every single one is done over zoom now. Cause obviously not just cause of the pandemic. Well, that's how people do it now. They just do it from home. So yeah. I don't know yeah. when in-person sessions are going to start again, but to go to a session um, with one of my favorite voice directors, well, um, unfortunately, Susan and Andrea are now retired, but Kelly's still going. Because um, yeah. I think he voice directed Corey Burton for uh, Mickey Mouse Funhouse uh, a week after he got back from Liverpool after meeting me. So I'm like, okay, this is this is, this is is connected because me and Corey were like pen pals during the pandemic. We took a touch for a few years because he has oh. autism, I have autism. Yeah. Did you work with him at all, Corey Burton? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Corey. In fact, Corey was, uh, I love Corey. Corey was on Freakazoid as um, uh, Invisibo. Um, ah. Yeah, that was him uh, doing his best Vincent Price impression. You know, silly people. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also Corey was part of, he came a couple times to the voiceover improv project, which was me, Eric Bauza, uh, Mick Winger, we would get together on Wednesdays. Oh, um, wow. Why did Mick not would... tell me this? What a spokesman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we, we, would, we, would, we would get together on Wednesdays uh, for no good reason at a studio, and we would just do improv. We would get so cool. ideas, um, and we would all just be around, and we would just do improv scenes. Um, and Corey came a couple, couple times, and <laughs> Corey is just... He's so funny. Um, yeah. And all, all, also Corey was the announcer in a pilot I did at Nickelodeon um, because I love Corey's sound. I love I love that he can do sort of the Paul Freeze Haunted yeah. Mansion voice. Yeah. Um, but 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 he's also so well, here's an, another theme. He's just such a nice guy. And um, I miss him. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. Yeah. 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 Um... 
we kind of called it, we kind of called it quits uh, a few months ago. Like you mm. know, it's hot, really hard to explain in the simple terms. Yeah, so all I can really say is that we called it quits a few months ago. That sounds like mm. that sounds really wrong. Like we're in a relationship. That's that was no. We we what's the correct kind of term? What we'd say? Um, we parted ways. Got it. We parted ways. Yeah, in the, in the in the nicest way possible. Um, I don't like talking about it publicly. Like, well, I mean, yes, I talk about it privately sometimes because of how sad it made me. But you know, yeah. There. Mm. Uh, anyways, moving on. I feel I feel like women Jimmy Fallon changing positions every few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, so yeah, you're working on the uh, 17, and then you're working on freaking stuff with Corbin. So what was it like to think to that? So yeah, I know you had the table slammed and stuff. <laughs> um. Yes, we were talking about Kelly Ward and Seven yes. and stuff. And you also it said on Wikipedia that you also in OKKO, OK Let's Be Heroes. Yeah, I did one. I did one. I think I was president of the universe in in that. Um, uh-huh. Uh huh. I d- I don't I don't remember that much about it. To be honest with you, mm. which is surprising because normally <laughs> I remember everything. Um, did you record as a group? Yes. Yes. Okay. Right, I'm just having a, just a quick look at these. Okay. Hang on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ah. <laughs> okay. The episode where you um, voiced the president of the universe, Ted Viking and Tedra. I don't know what episode that is, but it was an episode. Uh, Stephen Ogg was in it. Did you meet yes. him? Yes. It's Professor Venomous. I did. <gasps> I met the whole group. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. can't find it anywhere, but um, I have I have a, a piece of Professor Venomous art that I gave to Stephen. He signed it for me. Um, I can't find it at the moment. I've probably moved it into my signed stuff. But uh, yeah, of course, I know him as obviously Trevor Phillips from GTA 5. But also, I had a quick obsession with OKKO OK in the summer of last year. So, um, of course, I had to do some OKKO okay, okay, art. But wow. I'm meeting him. He's doing the same event as Frank in Edinburgh. So I'm oh, great. Awesome. to give to him. Like I, I'm just going to insist to him. No, you keep it. You keep it. It's yours. Like, I know I did that with Frank last, uh, in uh, March, 2020, when I met him, like I gave him some art uh, to sign um, and I kept it. But this time, obviously I'm doing art for him to keep, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, hang on. I have a picture here. Here, here it is. Stephen with my art. I can't really see, but you know. Oh, very cool. At the at the bottom, it says, uh, "I've seen it in." Nice. Signed. I have that yeah, in my little yeah. rock after. Oh, it's so awesome. lovely. Like you know, he plays a, a murderous, psychotic man called Trevor Phillips in GTA Five, and then he just voices the most wholesome, precious purple bean ever in OKKO. <laughs> Character development, people. Yeah, but wow. Oh my gosh, I am jealous. Like I think who did I talk to the other day? I think it was Mel. Yeah, Mel- Melody M. Spivak. Uh, she said she met Stephen when she did at OKKO OK as well. I'm like, okay, this is cool. Like one of my favorite GTA car- Five characters because he's just as psychotic as I am. He's meeting like all my favorite voice actors, like Jim Cummings, his his assistant Lord Boxman, then Robbie Damon, who I met in person at the same event. I met Kevin Conroy and Will Friedel, and uh, like. Uh, uh, Candy Milo as well, because I interviewed mm-hmm. her. Oh my gosh, I need to stop rushing about myself. I'm so sorry. Um, no worries. I'm looking at um, your Behind the Voice Actors page, because obviously it says pretty much like every single voice that you've done, more than Wikipedia. So this is really going to help me. Um, wow. I didn't, I didn't know that you were in um, Dave the Barbarian. Yes, I was. I was the Dark Lord Chuckles the Silly Piggy. Wow. That's so yes. cool. Yeah, and that had a... I have Frank in it. It's like, yeah, yeah, I thought so. Oh, yeah, Frank was fatty. Yeah, he, he was. It says it, yeah. It was, oh, yeah, I remember when Freakazoid was brought back for Teen Titans Go, you did an episode and they brought back Ed, um, Ed Asner, Joe Leahy, because he was the yes. movie, yeah, and David Warner, yeah. Yes, and unfortunately, I was so bummed because I, I was out of town when they were both coming coming back. Um, And Joe, Joe Leahy, Ed Asner, and Dave, David Warner, and I will always regret not being able to be at that session because I did my thing independently. But uh, uh, had I, you know, obviously in hindsight, had had I known, you know, that um, we were going to lose them soon, I, I, I would have done everything to be in that session. So, so yeah. all of them recorded together then, even the main cast? 
Uh, well, I think David recorded from uh, where you are in, in uh, uh, yeah, in so Ireland. he recorded, yep, yeah. and um, I think uh, Joe Leahy came in and Ed, Ed Asner came in, but David, yeah, they didn't fly him out, he just, he politely stayed at home. Ah, uh, I was going to say, because I was <laughs> Tara Strong met David Warner, I need to yeah. ask her, you know, I'm just having a lot, you know, just behind the oh yeah because uh billy west and Dee bradley baker and scott menville uh were in um 70 as well just looking at it it's just yeah it, it makes was a me, huge cast it makes me so happy like this show i have never heard of this show before the seven D. like up until very recently and i'm like why have i never heard of it yeah i think there was talk about disney plus taking it or or uh i i, I don't know where that where that went but but yeah, yeah disney, disney plus my do uh well listen i have an audition that's due in about 15 minutes that's okay so i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to go i'm so oh, sorry that's okay um can i just think with one final little yeah, yeah 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 um i was gonna say you know it's 15 minutes like if you got to go in 15 minutes or if you got to go in like 10 minutes then prepare like five minutes or something like that hold on i need to leave i need to I, let me see my edition. Uh, let's do another, let's go to the bottom of the hour and then I gotta go. And then I gotta do my- Bottom of the hour, is that a half hour? Okay, good. Okay, yeah. we'll be done uh, before then. Yeah, that's that's like 10 minutes or-, or Okay, that's fine. Okay. I just got one right. final question. Um, it's about yeah. pig, goat, banana, cricket. Yes. Um, you were cricket, of course. This is like the little final topic thing I'll talk about and then I'll probably yeah. sign off. Yeah. So what was it like working on that show real quick? It was great because I met Tom Wilson uh, and Tom and I become very fast, fast friends. Uh, he's a great guy. It was a very, it was a very difficult uh, character because um, his dialogue, Cricket's dialogue, are huge and it's very complicated and it's very scientific. Like my ceramic, I'm commoner, and it was like, so it's sort of when you were mentioning speaking fast and stuff is like when when there's a piece of dialogue and it's like this big you can't take your time. You have to zoom through it, but they would throw in things like thoracic angometer and all these technical terms. Uh, so I would always rehearse at home and, uh, be before I went there, but it was, it was blast. Plus you got to record at Nickelodeon. Um, that's when, when you go to Nickelodeon to record and it, there's just something that feels like really cool because a lot of the, you know, a lot of the Disney things, a lot of the Warner Brothers things, you're not going to Disney. You're not going to Warner Brothers. You're going to yeah. these, they rent studios all across Hollywood and you're going to those. But but Nickelodeon, you go to Nickelodeon, which I've always found why other studios didn't do that. I've always been very confused about. Um, even DreamWorks, we would go, uh, I was in a show called Puss in Boots and, um, oh, hold on. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I'm, it's I'm okay. Gonna turn, I'm going to turn that off. Okay. Um, I would go to, uh, yeah, to Puss in Boots and, um, and and that was DreamWorks and we never recorded DreamWorks and always made me crazy. I'm like, why can't we go to the cool places? But anyway, uh, Nickelodeon was cool. Uh, Candy Milo was really fun to work with. She's super, super, super sweet. Um, and uh, it was a great show. It was fun. It was fun. I don't think it did well because it was really weird, uh, which is I'm normally in really weird things. So anyway, there you go. Oh, there's that, yeah. Uh, Paul, it's been lovely to chat to you. I know you've got to go soon, so I'm just going to quickly speed for this outro, if that's okay. Uh, where can we find you on social media? Do you have a website? Do you have Facebook? Do you have uh, Do you have yes, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on all of the things. Uh, that it, uh, Rug, Rug One, you can find me on um, Instagram. And, uh, and if you are close to Fanex in Salt Lake City. On oh, yes, I was going to say, second, yeah. You can come see me and Tom Ruger for the first time ever and probably the last, but you never know. We'll see. I thought you were well, coming to England. Just... Yeah, I was going to well, say. All right, I will come. If you make it happen, I'll come. I was going to say to for those of you in Utah, uh, Paul will be appearing at Fanex in Salt Lake City this September. I know we just said that, but I like repeating things because I'm a weirdo. Uh, with Tom Ruger <laughs> as well. So uh, I think Jess Farnell's going. So it'll be like a 70 anime. Yes. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Uh, and with that, uh, this interview ends here, I'm afraid. But I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, go check out Paul on all of his social medias. And with that, stay safe, stay healthy, be happy, be kind to yourself and to others. And thank you for watching. Bye and cut. Mm -hmm.